Hey everybody, this is video three in the cycle cart frame series. First video, yeah, we talked about angling the front of the frame. Second video, we did our kind of our um, jig for the frame. This video, we're going to go over a few more details on the jig and go over some parts that we've got to get for this project, which just came in. Uh, the bearings and a few other items that are important to this. Um, still waiting on a few other items to come in, but uh, that'll that's not going to hold us up right now. So we'll pro progress on this. Um, also, we're going to talk about the tools. Uh, there's a few tools you're going to need, at least the ones that I th that I think are required. If you have a bandsaw, that's great. If you have a drill press, that's great. I don't have any of those things. I'm just using a four and a half inch cutoff wheel and a hand drill. So we'll talk about that also. And uh, if you have any questions on cycle cars, feel free to mention or uh, comment. Uh, leave your questions in the comments. Um, and thanks for watching. This is going to be fun. Okay, so tools. Uh, you're going to need some clamps. Um, I'm a big fan of Harbor Freight. Most of this stuff came from Harbor Freight. You don't have to spend a ton of money on hobby tools. Uh, to, for a hobby, if you're going to be professional, yes, but spend some money and get the better tools. But you'll need an assortment of clamps. You'll need some hole saws. Get the hole saws designed to cut metal. This one's obviously been used quite a bit, cut quite a few holes in the frames. You need some protective gear. You'll need a drill, drill bits. And I picked up a second cutoff wheel. Uh, the first three frames I built, I used just this one. I had to go back and forth between the flapper disc and the cutoff wheel. Because once you cut a piece of metal, you pretty much got to clean it up with the flapper disc or some sort of grinding equipment. Um, it's handy. This was, I think, $10 or $12. Ridiculously cheap. So I have two now. So I just cut a couple pieces of this frame and uh, it just saves so much time not having to go back and forth between your tools. Um, you need some stuff to keep your line straight. We'll frame square and a ruler these are ha things that are handy not absolutely required but handy to have sometimes there's places where the tape measure is hard to get into um, as far as parts go so i got all this from mfg supply we got our motor plate we got our two bearing sets if you're doing a standard axle single solid axle just need one set of two bearings two bearings but not this is four bearings so this is going to have an inner and outer on both sides uh, you'll need some locking keyways to lock in the um, axles into these so that you know there's a set key in these but this is helpful to keep from sliding around these are the pitman arms there's some little keyways in here new chain i'm reusing a lot of my motor parts but i'm going to get a new chain uh, new set of pedals new set of tie rods and i just found out today i goofed i thought i was going to be able to use a uh, steering shaft that i had laying around but it's far too short so i don't know i thought i was going to get it all in one order but not so much so here's the part list uh, from MFG Supply. I'm hoping you can see. I'm going to kind of scale down this. I know it's a little bit the shadow there. Um, you can pause it where you need to pause it to get the part numbers. I've got a, an Excel spreadsheet of all this as well. Uh, if it's helpful to you to have that, I'm happy to share it with you. Um, but yeah, so when you're buying your parts, don't be, a, don't be afraid to buy them all at once. It saves you on freight. I think they sent me this box. All that fit in one box. I think $6.90 freight. Um, so do it all at once if you can. So on the frame jig, I did a little bit more since last time. I went ahead and got my front cross member done. I uh, put frame on both sides, and this happened to be 14 and a half inch wide. Before I, before I put this in, I, I indexed them, you know, drew on the board where it needed to go. So it's nice and straight and square when we go put it back together. Same thing with this back cross member. Uh, we notated where it goes. It's 18 inches long. Again, there's a little one by here. To locate it, remember there's a bottom. You want to keep your the weld joint on the bottom. I, I noticed in one of my other videos I had the frame actually, the, the joint was actually on the side. Um, so I guess it could be either way, either on the very top or on the side. So just be aware of that. Um, I also marked out where my axle center line is going to be. And I marked it on the, on the frame rail. So the next step is to find the center. Here, drill this through both sides with the drill bit. And then hole saw this side and hole saw a smaller one on the other side. We'll do that right now. Okay, so we started drilling the holes. I marked them and I drilled a 1 8 inch pilot hole on each side. Um, I'm using a 2 and a, let's see what this, 2 and an eighth. 2 and a quarter would be perfect, but 2 and an eighth works because I'm going to be using the outer bracket. Let me show you what that is. That's what I mean by that. So, this comes with the set. Sometimes people delete this. I deleted it on mine. Um, what it does is it here. And then sharing mounts on top of it. So when I drill this hole at, I did a pilot or a uh, test piece, two and an eighth. This fits perfectly. 
and this hole is just big enough. So this is on the outside. So the inside hole, because there's not going to be a bearing on the inside, is going to get the, I think this is one and a half inch, let's see where's the size, yeah one and a half inch on the inside. So the outside gets the bigger hole, inside gets the smaller hole. Um, if you put your bearings on the inside, then obviously it would be the other way around. But I recommend them on the outside, just you want them as far from the center as you can get them. Um, so that's the idea. So this is going to get welded in place here once I get the hole all the way through. I'm taking a break because this thing gets really hot. The, the grill gets really hot. The metal gets really hot. I'm using a little bit of oil. This isn't really the proper oil, but at least it's something. But uh, So this is going to get welded on here to reinforce the frame because the frame is going to actually be cut. So anyway, more in a bit. Okay, so we got our holes drilled. Uh, the outer hole on the outside of the frame is larger than the inside. And the reason for that is to accommodate the bearings. So if you weren't going to be using this bearing mount, they, get, they provide this when you buy this kit. This mounts in here, your bearing mounts in here. So where these little set keys are go toward the outside toward on your axle. And then another one goes on the outside of that. And then you bolt that down. Once you bolt that down, that keeps this from sliding around. Right now it's movable. Once you clamp it down, it, it makes it stiff. So that's going to be right there. This is going to get welded in place and it's going to be through bolted to the back of the frame. Inside the frame, um, after I notch this, I have to notch this basically parallel to this so that my axle, because it's going to be a differential, won't be able to slide in and out. It's going to have to come up straight out. So I'm going to notch the top of the frame here so the axle will come straight out. Um, I'm also going to gusset in here with a little piece of pipe so that when I bolt this in from the back side, it won't crush the frame. It's just a small piece of pipe uh, with, a, I think it's a 5 16 bolt. They give you nuts and bolts for this, so this, this bigger bolt in the bag is for your axle. These smaller ones are designed to bolt your flanges to your mount. So if you, weren't, if you were just mounting this on top of the frame, for example, like this, the hardware is already provided for you. You would just weld it down here and then mount it here. And that mounts your axle. So that's what's going to be in the inner mounts when I build the framing for the actual uh, interior bearings for the frame. Anyway, so this is the outer bearing. So this is going to go here. It's going to get welded and bolted in place later. But for now, the holes are cut. Again, the outside was a, uh, I already forgot what it was, 2 and an eighth, I think. 2 and an eighth. And that just barely fits. If you were not using it, you got the clearance a little bit. It's a little bit proud right there. If you just sand this with a sanding disc or something, you would get it. If you went with a two and three eighths, it's a little bit bigger. I wanted as much material here as I could get to give it strength. Um, but if you're using this plate like it's designed, then it's, it's easy. It's done. The interior one, again, is inch and a half on the inside. It gives you room for the axle to, to have some space in here. You can go bigger if you wanted to. Like if you wanted to buy two, you can do them both the same. But I wanted, again, wanted as much material in here to give you your strength. That's the weak part of your frame is where the axle mounts. Okay, so then we're going to call that the end of video three. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions on cycle cars or what we're doing, uh, please comment here. Com follow us on Facebook. I've got all the plans that we're using on Facebook as well as the, the um, parts list. And uh, yeah, so hopefully these videos are short and we're going to have just kind of small, concise pieces so you don't have to watch a half an hour video to find the one piece you need. You can go straight to it, hopefully. Hopefully this is helpful to you. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.